Tonight on Studios America, Sarah Gonzalez is going to be here. She's going to unveil the phenomenon that is known as the dink. We'll tell you what that is. John Kerry is the first to violate the Biden administration's new methane rule. We'll show you the video and a preview of tomorrow's fourth GOP debate. We'll get to all that in just a minute. But first, let me tell you about Fox and Odin Craft American Whiskey. They get a bottle right here. Yeah, that's right. Thanksgiving may be over. Christmas is on the way. That means it's a time to settle into your favorite chair, kick your feet up near the fireplace and have a glass of Fox and Odin whiskey. You've worked hard this year. You deserve it. You'll, you've earned a little relaxation. Fox and Odin whiskeys are created to honor the wild beauty around us. Snow-capped mountains, a field of wildflowers, a roaring waterfall, or maybe, you know, just your own backyard. This holiday season, let these perfectly blended spirits complement the view. A warm fire, maybe a shared meal, packages wrapped and ribboned and left under the tree. However you celebrate, enjoy to the fullest with double gold award-winning Fox and Odin craft American whiskey. You can take this, taste the spirit of the holidays today. A great gift, and this one just got not open yet, and it's almost too beautiful to open, but I do focus on almost in that sentence. You can buy it online and ship it to your door at foxandodin.com, foxandodin.com, foxandodin.com. The promo code is Stu. You get free shipping. Please drink responsibly with foxandodin.com. here part nine we're going to start tonight by doing the state of the 2024 race part nine and i don't know the ninth in the series is that a strong point for a series i mean i would argue probably no i mean if you look at w where you are if you want to go so through some of these timelines you're at the nightmare on elm street 2010 remake which i don't even think i saw uh i don't remember that one at all you've got the man with a golden gun is the ninth james bond movie uh halloween is the 2007 rob zombie remake which, again, I did see that one, I think, and, you know, eh. um, Then there is uh, Star's Trek Insurrection, which, uh, if you remember, this is when they went inside the Capitol. Uh, wow, just a terrible, terrible story. Uh, Son of Godzilla. I have not seen this one, but I must see it. I want to give you the tagline. This is the actual tagline of the movie, Son of Godzilla. Have you ever seen a monster hatch from a monster egg? No? You will. <laughs> It's a pretty low expectation to set. And, of course, uh, the ninth Friday the 13th is Jason Goes to Hell. And guess what? We're in primary season, so we're all in hell together with Jason. Uh, a lot's going on tomorrow. Uh, the big debate night, and this one yeah, has a, a lot of promise. Megyn Kelly is going to be one of the moderators. Uh, just to let you know, tomorrow, uh, if you want more stew than you can possibly handle tomorrow is going to be your day we of course going to be on the normal radio show with glenn beck in the morning we'll be talking about the debate and all sorts of stuff then i'm going to be on with megan kelly on her show on sirius xm uh, and uh that's going to be going on right after our show then we have the pre-show which we're going to be watching right here uh on uh on plays tv uh that's coming up at 7:30. Then the debate uh, itself at 8, from 8 to 10, we'll be watching that and, and making fun of everybody. And then at uh, 10, a reaction show uh, I'm going to be on as well. You can join right now, blazetv.com slash do. Use the code debate and get 30 bucks off your subscription to Blaze TV. Uh, there's a lot going on tomorrow, and we hope you ju do join us for us. I will say, uh, you know, you know how the coverage normally is for these debates. We will do a better job than that. that uh, that's about the lowest... Honestly, I might be four glasses into Fox and Odin by the time we get to the post show, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, DeSantis, Ramaswamy, Haley and Christie have all qualified for the fourth GOP debate. Now, of course, as I mentioned, Megyn Kelly is going to be one of the moderators. Also, News Nation's Elizabeth Vargas and the Washington Free Beacon's Ileana Johnson set to air from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern time. I mean, so Christie barely made it. He just, just got over the finish line there. And in most races that Chris Christie uh, participates in, he does not get all the way to the finish line. So that's something to uh, say for Christie. Um, I don't know what the argument is for him to be in the race at this point. Is there any, is there any justification for him being in the race at this point? It's hard to know. In fact, a lot of people are calling for him to drop out. 
well, yeah, you know, he could do that if he wants or not. I mean, really, it doesn't make a difference. The, the other question is Vivek. I mean, look, Vivek's had a uh, had a, a a somewhat impressive run here. I think you could say that. You know, he's been he's his name is out there. People have been impressed by him at times. They haven't liked him sometimes. But like, it's a Buttigieg like run. It's Buttigieg ish, right? Like, no one knew who he was. Now people know who he is. This probably leads to some, you know, government job. It could be as much as maybe Trump's VP. He's certainly rumored in those circles. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's a, some high role in the government. Maybe who knows what it is. But, I mean, he's probably done what he's going to accomplish here. He's at 5 or 6%. He's qualified for, these, for the debate pretty easily, uh, where Christie just barely qualified. But I don't know. Is there an argument for Vivek to be in there? And, you know, for Chris Christie, is there... What's the ulterior motive? I mean, I don't know. Maybe he keeps saying it's about Donald Trump not winning, but it seems more about him getting on MSNBC than anything else. I mean, probably, like, the debate right now would be interesting if you had Trump and DeSantis and Haley on the stage. I think that's the best way. If, if you could design a debate right now in the Republican primary, you put those three up there. They all have different shades of versions of what a Republican might say. We obviously know Trump is kind of his own animal. Uh, Nikki Haley sort of has a, uh, you know, an old school Republican vibe, more on the national foreign policy. Um, and, you know, uh, DeSantis has sort of the new voice, I think, in the Republican Party. Uh, it's a little different than Trump's. It's sort of maybe in between Trump's and, uh, and, and Haley's. And, you know, at some point, maybe it would be nice if they all got on stage together. I know I would like it. I'd watch it. Um, I'll watch this one, too. But, you know, a lot of times we kind of toss this out there. But in reality, there hasn't been one ca vote cast yet. And so we have to kind of relax. We all want this to kind of go fast. We all want everyone to drop out and get to the end of the game. And I understand that. But in reality, no votes have been cast yet. We don't know what this is. We don't even have good polling out of Iowa. We don't have much of anything. And if you remember Rick Santorum, who wound up winning uh, Iowa, was still in the single digits at this point in the race. I don't know if that, that sort of analysis applies. It's a good data point to remember. Hey, this can still turn around. But, you know, you do have a, a, a guy who's basically an incumbent-type president, a former president, uh, running at the top of the ticket. So maybe that doesn't apply, but... Why not sit here and watch this play out? We'll be here watching it with you at youtube.com slash America for coverage kind of all over the place. And then we'll have the additional coverage all from Blaze TV tomorrow. Make sure to check that out. By the way, on the Iowa polls, where are they? Can I get some Iowa poll? Can I get some decent pollster to give me a poll of Iowa? We haven't seen one in like a month. What is going on? We should have at least one a week, at least one a week right now. So we get a picture as to what's going on. No one seems to be doing anything. Everyone's just lazy. No one's, no one's doing any polling or cheap or something. I don't know what it is. Trump, by the, by the way, he's not going to be at the debate again. Um, he is going to join uh, Hannity for a town hall, um, which is going to be, I guess, pre-taped and then aired in that slot. Trump has a fundraiser of some sort he's going to be doing during the actual debate time. Again, I would like to see him there. I've been honest about that from the beginning. I understand the strategy of it. It's worked, obviously, so far. He's maintained his lead, and that's really what the test of that strategy was. Uh, eventually it will wind up being a test of whether he wins or not, but that's still a little bit down the road. But he should be there. I think it would be good for the country. It would be good for conservatives. It would be good for people to see him answer questions. I mean, I, I, I think that would be positive. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy uh, and Ron DeSantis are going to have town halls on CNN. As I said, I, I think both of these guys, this is a good move. Sometimes you get into, when you're, especially when you're a front-runner candidate, you might think, why am I going to go on CNN? All they're going to do is criticize me. Both Vivek and Ron DeSantis excel when they are being attacked like that. This will actually probably be a good environment for both of them. And both of them need to take a risk, right? They need, both need to get out there and get in front of people. Try to have your moment in front of the CNN audience. Try to have your moment if you're Ron DeSantis or Vivek Ramaswamy. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but that is uh, you know, basically what's going on now on the other side of this. So there's still so much to come when it comes to this election. And a lot of people are kind of tuning it out, I think. But the people in Iowa aren't tuning it out. The people in New Hampshire aren't tuning it out. The people in South Carolina and Nevada are not tuning it out. It, it, we're going to get to this point where votes are cast and we'll have a real decision. Look, if Ron DeSantis loses in Iowa and Nikki Haley uh, or anyone else you know, loses, uh, you know, anyone other than Trump winds up uh, um, losing in, uh, in New Hampshire, it, it's probably going to get really boring.
Like, if, if no one can defeat Trump in those first two states, it's going to pretty much be over. Now, it might not be totally over. Maybe there's some, some strange scenario I'm, not think, I'm thinking of right now. But generally speaking, you got two chances to take on Donald Trump and maybe take him out as the candidate for the Republican Party. Number one is Iowa. It's, gonna, it's where Ron DeSantis is going. If DeSantis can win Iowa, maybe he shoots to the front of the pack. Uh, second state, Nikki Haley. Uh, probably going to be that. Now, Chris Christie would make his argument there that he's the guy. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But still, Nikki Haley in New Hampshire, she wins there. She's got South Carolina next, her home state. She's seemingly polling decently in Nevada as well, so maybe she has a path. Some Republicans have a blunt message for Chris Christie, uh, drop out. And I think all Republicans actually have that message. Whether you think it's important for him to drop out or not is another question. The New York Times is writing about this. They say the focus on Mrs. Mr. Christie's bid reflects the anxiety that has consumed anti-Trump Republicans as the race moves into the final weeks before the Iowa caucuses on January 15th. Despite three debates, tens of millions of dollars, and many months of campaigning, None of the six candidates still challenging Mr. Trump have made much of a dent in his double-digit lead, and they are rapidly running out of time. The people are supporting Chris are not supporting them because they love Chris Christie. They want someone to take on Trump, said Rick Santorum, the guy we were just talking about who won Iowa back in the day. Um, he didn't get enough traction to win the nomination, obviously. He has a really important decision to make as to whether to back out and let his votes go to somebody else or whether he's going to actually improve Trump's chances by staying in. And of course, that all goes by the assumption that Chris Christie was selling, telling the truth when he was saying, I want to be president, number one, uh, thinks he can win, number two, and he's trying to stop Donald Trump. I don't know that any of those are actually his motivation. His motivation is more like, I want to be on TV a lot. And the other thing is, look, well, what else am I going to do? Right. Like, I, you know, what else is no one cares about Chris Christie if he's not running for president. He'd just be yet another voice on a panel uh, for MSNBC. Instead, he's you know still in the conversation. And honestly, what do you got to lose if you're Chris Christie? Uh, as grumbles over Trump free debates grow, Republicans weigh looser rules. The party is considering whether to open the door to debates not sponsored by the RNC, which could lead to more onstage clashes, but also diminish their fanfare. One of the interesting things here is that these requirements get tougher and tougher for each debate. But at some point, if you don't have Trump in there, I don't know. I mean, how many are you going to have to qualify? You might only have two. Um, the Haley Biden Trump is getting a poll. Again, another national poll, which is fine. I don't mind getting national polls. Can we get some in Iowa? Can we get some more in New Hampshire? Can we get some more in South Carolina? Right now, that's what matters. Haley uh, leads Biden by four points in 2024, but falls short of Trump. Uh, she's up by four, and basically Trump is up by seven in that particular poll. Um, you know, right now you see a, an interesting battle going on there in the second pay, place sort of slot. The DeSantis, you know, if you take it, you want to live an alternate world, an alternate universe, this is actually a really interesting race, right? Like if Trump wasn't in it and you had DeSantis versus Haley and they were this close, it's kind of be a fascinating race because it really is sort of a new direction for the party and maybe a return to previous directions that the party was going in with Haley. That's kind of a, that would be kind of a fascinating dynamic. It's less fascinating because they're both behind by 20 and 30 points. So, I mean, I try to, you know, it's like the, the NFL announcer who's, you know, trying to make the fourth quarter of a 42-14 game seem exciting. Yeah, you can bring up interesting things. We've kind of done that, right? Like, We'll look, we'll mine this for certain details. Is, is there a side of life for this candidate or the other? But as of right now, this has been a kind of a boring static race for a long time. Really, the only story that has changed over the past three or four months has been the somewhat rise of Haley, where she's gone from maybe fourth or fifth place to third. That's uh, not exactly a riveting storyline. I mean, it's more riveting than the Godzilla movie, Son of Godzilla, uh, where the entire plot is just, hey... You ever seen an egg crack and a monster come out? Well, you will. I mean, it's better than that, maybe, but not by much. And actually, I kind of want to watch the monster movie a little bit more. But I encourage you to do that after our coverage for the debate. It's the fourth Republican debate pre-show at 730, the debate at 8 o'clock, and then reaction afterward at 10 o'clock. If you go to blazetv.com slash stew and use the code debate, there you will get 30 bucks off your subscription. So, it's look, it's worthwhile joining. And, you know, I've... We've kind of introduced some a lot of new things here at Blaze TV. There's a lot to come. We were talking to Glenn back earlier this week about a documentary he's working on about uh, the border and Texas that I think you're going to find fascinating. Um, 
we have new documentaries coming all the time. They, they have a whole schedule mapped out, and it's really cool. A lot of these I think you're really going to like. That's all part of your Blaze TV Plus subscription. But also part of it is a free pass to all of our content on the print side, on the website. So if you go to theblaze.com, right now I think you're getting pretty much everything for free. and Some of it will eventually be behind a paywall, I think. But you can also, if you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, I'm watching on YouTube. I'm watching Studios America on YouTube already. Um, maybe I'll just, I don't really want to pay the subscription right now. I don't want to pay whatever it is, 12 bucks a month or, or whatever the cost is. Understandable. If you can't do it, that's totally cool. We, we love having you on YouTube. We love having you on podcasts. But if you wanted to take a step to just get access to all the uh, independent journalism that's coming from The Blaze, you can do that as well. I think it's like three bucks a month. So if you want to do something that's just supportive and really helps us, we appreciate it, helps fund some important journalism, you can just go to theblaze.com and just sign up for the news site and, and, get, and get for three bucks a month all those articles. I think that's going to be well worth your time as well. So whatever you want to do, blazetv.com slash stew, promo code is, bla- is, uh, is debate for 30 bucks off. Uh, Sarah Gonzalez is going to be a big part of the debate coverage tomorrow as well, and she's going to join us to preview it next. As we approach the new year, it's time to think about becoming a healthier, more energetic version of yourself in 2024. Gosh, we're going to have to come up with a New Year's resolution soon, aren't we? If you've been dealing with low energy or have gains from, you know, extra LBs, uh, you can't seem to shake them off. That's understandable. Well, the issue might just be your liver. Your liver is a super important part of your body, of course. And one in three Americans are now living with a sluggish, fatty liver. And all that booze and carb-packed potatoes you're going to have for Christmas probably won't help all that much. So you better get prepared for 2024 because it's going to be a crazy year and you need all the energy you can get. One thing that can help is Liver Health Formula. It has 11 powerful botanicals that help recharge and protect your liver. And by today, you're going to get a free bottle of blood sugar formula as well to help reduce sugar cravings. Go to getliverhelp.com slash stew now. You'll claim your free bonus gift. Don't miss the chance to start the new year feeling your best. It's getliverhelp.com slash stew. Getliverhelp.com slash stew. I'm joined once again by Sarah Gonzalez. She's the host of the News and Why It Matters right here on Blaze TV. And she's going to be a participant, a wonderful participant in our coverage for the Republican debate, the fourth one. Now, it starts 7.30. You're going to be on the pre-show, too, right? Uh, With me? Come on. Come I, on. Come I on might be. I'm okay. not sure. All right. So pre-show, you're on. 7.30. Oh, okay. <laughs> then uh, we're going to watch the debate and make fun of it at 8. I know I'm doing that. And then the reaction show afterward at 10. Yeah, that's But just, a long that's night. it. That's, that's all we're doing tomorrow. That is a long um, night. It's all Eastern time, by the way, so... There you go. You can get $30 off, by the way, with the promo code DEBATE if you go to blazedebate.com. Uh, it's, uh, you know... That's a deal. I don't know. Like, I think normally I'm the guy who sits here and complains about the format and says, there's too many people. There's too few people. I don't know. I come up with something. I mean, I don't know. I feel like, honestly, with the exception of the guy in first place not showing up, I feel like, generally speaking, the format's been okay. We, I feel like we had a really bad second debate where everyone was talking over each other. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I feel like they've been fine, like I, I, almost unremarkable. Mm-hmm. But without Donald Trump and him, they don't mean anything, it seems. E, and that is, of course, the problem. The, therein lies the problem is yeah. that this just has been like kind of pointless mm. every single time. And we're already on the fourth one. Yeah. So congratulations to us because that's how much time we've spent watching these stupid things. <laughs> and at the end of the day, it's like, what is this for again? Why are we watching this again? Um, look, I have a theory mm-hmm. that you guys just really don't like me. And that's why you want me to join you mm-hmm. in watching this debate. That's not a theory. That's a fact. That's a scientific <laughs> fact. No, we love having you on. Um, and it, 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 it's, I mean, like, I look at this and I feel like there are reasons to do these debates. And I, I think course. I'm in the minority at some level. Most people are just like, oh, God, I don't want to hear about this again. Yeah, but I was just being. No, I know. We're, we're being a little, obviously, we're exaggeratingly this whole thing. cynical. We're, yes. yes. But it's like, number one, there hasn't been one vote that's been cast yet. You know, a lot of people, and I talk about polls all the time, and you know, I'm always, always looking at them, and people are like, all right, why do you even look at the polls? You don't even care. Well, why is Tim Scott out of the race right now? Why right. is Mike Pence out of the race? Right. Because of polls. Yes. There hasn't been one vote cast yet. If you don't want to look at polls, then all these guys are going to stay in the race, at least until Iowa, and right. then God only knows what's going to happen. Um, so I would like, I, I don't, I, I, polls tell you generalities, I think, in a good way. But like, I can understand a few candidates staying in here, um, but there hasn't been any votes cast yet. It, 
you know, Ron DeSantis hasn't lost Iowa yet. Mm -hmm. Nikki Haley hasn't lost New Hampshire yet. Until those things happen, these are all really important conversations to have. And at some point, we may just say, okay, it looks like Donald Trump's going to smoke the field. Mm -hmm. But, like, until then, the game gets played, right? I agree. I agree. Uh, and, I mean, that's what I continue to tell people who I, know, I realize primary season breaks a lot of people. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know, I try to remind them, like, primar primaries are good. OK, mm -hmm. even if you love your candidate, iron sharpens iron. I mean, I recall here in the state of Texas, uh, our own Republican governor, Greg Abbott, was instituting mask mandates, you know, in the state and requiring a whole lot of covid restrictions that we didn't agree with until our very own Chad Brather and mm -hmm. some others jumped in the race. So this tends to be a good thing, even if you like your candidate, even if he's already winning in the polling by overwhelming margins. Primary processes are very important to play out. Yeah, I think that's very true. And in this case, probably more than ever in mm -hmm. some ways, because of the fact that, they, look, we all understand the deep state, whatever you want to call it, is trying to put Donald Trump in prison. Yes. They may succeed. Yes. Right? If they succeed, you may need to figure out something else here. Yeah. So you might as well go through this process. I want to go back to what you just said, though, because I think this is really important. Why <laughs> does primary season break people? I, I don't understand it. Like, I remember as a young producer coming up on the Glenn Beck program and thinking to myself, you know, primary season is the most interesting this show could be. Mm -hmm. Because here we are talking about all these. We're not talking about, OK, hey, Hillary Clinton said something dumb again. We're talking about two forms of conservatism that are really close and, and you're trying to make a distinction between them and you're arguing out fine points of your philosophy. And I thought that was true. And then after about uh, six months of doing it, I was like, this is the worst <laughs> time for this radio because no one, everyone acts as if you just insulted their mom. Yes. Yes. It's wild. And especially when you say something like, I think both of, you know, I like, I think two candidates are really great for different reasons. And here's why. And they're like, no, you have to pick yeah. one. You can only, you can't l even like another candidate. You have to like one guy and hate all the rest of them or else. But I, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. You've been in this business longer than I have. Has it gotten progressively worse? Because me just being in this uh, a lot more recently than you, I feel like we've, be as we've become a lot more tribal, that has carried over into primaries. I don't feel like it's been this tense. I yeah. feel like every year it gets progressively worse I agree. and more tense. I think it has gotten worse. I mean, I, I, there was a time where I think like people wanted from their hosts. Like I remember doing shows where we would come out, and we'd say something that the audience, we knew the audience was gonna disagree with. And like the audience would come, you know, we'd meet people later on and they'd be like, oh, that was my favorite show. I don't agree with you at all, but that was great. I love the, yeah. the way you pushed my buttons on that or the way you came after that viewpoint. You pushed me and I, now I understand it better or maybe it changed my mind. Right. And like, I don't, I feel like it was, a, I mean, I have to say, I think it was around the time of social media picking up and Donald Trump picking up where it became like, People no longer wanted that from, yeah. from the shows they were listening to. They wanted to just hear their voice, th their viewpoints screamed as loud as possible. And like, look, we do that a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. I got, like, when we say Hillary Clinton said something stupid, you know, we mean it and it's true. And, you right. know, I understand why people like it, but like, I don't know. I, I, I like to be pushed a little bit when I'm listening to a show. I like to hear a different viewpoint. I, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I like that. Yeah. And in, in the primary time should be the time where we're really discussing that. I mean, you know, Nikki Haley is representing, I think, a really um, uh, typical version of maybe what the conservative, the Republican Party was, uh, you know, a of few 2004? years. 2004? <laughs> yeah. 2008? Yeah. Uh, 2012? Yeah. 2002? Um, but like, that's a conversation we should have. Right. Like, we should have a good representative of that philosophy and d discuss why it's right or why it's wrong. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. We don't need to eliminate the conversation from our whole lives. I cannot remember a time in which um, I have had distinct conversations with many people, uh, some of them Trump supporters, some of them DeSantis supporters, but both, all, both sides of those, those conversations are both very, very clear that they will not vote for the other party should that person become the candidate. Mm. And that's very scary for me because I've never, I can never remember a time where we didn't say, all right, I don't like this guy as much, I like this guy, but like obviously I'm voting th for the Republican candidate because we can't let Joe Biden run the, the country for another four years. Look how bad he's done in three. <laughs> and and, I, and I'm, I, I try to engage with a lot of people on my social media. Obviously this isn't like a science. Yeah. Um, it's just me interacting with, with people on social media. But it is really bizarre to me that 
you got both parties who are just so staunchly like, I don't care if he's the candidate. I'm not showing up to vote for him. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah, it is. And I, I feel like it just, I think social media is the biggest feature of this. Yeah. Um, because it, it, it just like, it asks people to come up with opinions all the time. And you know what? Sometimes you don't have them. Right. Sometimes you don't. Yeah. You know, yeah. like we get sit, we sit here and we, we get paid to do this dumb job all the time. And it's like, all right, well, we're just sitting here talking about what we believe. And like we're incentivized to do that. Right. And people, more people will listen if they if we're honest about our opinions. So that's good. But like not everyone should be a host of a show. Mm -hmm. And that's what social media does. I've been in this business forever, as you point out, which I think was kind of an old comment. There. It wasn't. Um, it, it seemed like it. No. Um, but like. The people in radio are nuts, right. like in the most lovable way possible. But we're all insane. Like <laughs> you shouldn't people shouldn't be doing those same things. It brings out the worst in you at times. Yeah. And like, I just feel like it's it's impossible. Like, you know, like the DeSantis thing is a great example of it. Like Ron DeSantis uh, ran ads for his president or for his gubernatorial campaign, which were almost entirely dedicated to how great Donald Trump mm -hmm. was. Right. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump said how great Ron DeSantis was. Mm -hmm. Every Donald Trump supporter six months ago loved Ron DeSantis. Mm -hmm. And every Ron DeSantis supporter six months ago loved Donald Trump. And now they act as if it's it's freaking Hamas versus the IDF. <laughs> <They really do. laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Like, I know. look, do, who, no matter who you, you are, we've already seen Donald Trump as president. Yeah. I think Ron DeSantis would be a great president. Like, this shouldn't be this divisive. It shouldn't be this crazy. We've got bigger battles to fight. I mean, I've had this conversation with a relative who just, they, they're a DeSantis supporter and they're like, I, I can't, I cannot vote for Trump again. And I'm like, in the general against Joe Biden, you're telling me you can't vote for this guy who would fix the border, who would make sure that we're not, uh, you know, cutting off children's body parts. Like, really? You're still going to let the guy who is, I'm not even sure if he has a heartbeat at this point take the stage when you have right. a chance to vote against it. It's just so bizarre to me. And I think too, like this, the, part of this is, this stuff may have gone on more behind the scenes. You didn't hear it as often as in social media. And, and, and this is also what we see often is that people come back home. Right. Like, you know, a lot, I hope. What, you always see these third party candidates with 15 and 18% of the vote, yeah. you know, six months before an election. And at the end, they wind up usually going down to three or four. I mean, Gary Johnson was like that. I mean, he had a huge, he had some polls where he was nine, 10, 12% and wound up with Gary. what? Three. Yeah. So uh, you know, this this is usually what happens. Yeah. People come and they get the anger of this past. I just don't know why the anger's there. Right. There's no reason to be angry at another conservative or another Republican who has a different view than you. Make your argument and then like calm down. Yeah. Like I, I don't know. I mean maybe maybe I'm just like too sensitive. It's just but it's just like it's just an odd thing. I don't know why we have to fight with each other. Let's fight with the other people. They're I would nuts. argue <laughs> you they are too sensitive, not you. Mm. I think you I mean your position is the rational one, which is the problem these days is that there's not a lot of rational thinking. And if we're the rational voices, that's just a terrible society. Is, we you guys are in trouble. Well, uh, let me tell you, we'd have to do this quickly, but uh, let me, it's a rational society uh, up until a point, right? And let let me give you a, a, an idea of where that point is, the dink phenomenon, oh. which is apparently a thing now. These are people bragging about how they are dual income with no kids. Let me just give you a taste of this. We're dinks. We're going to get asked daily when we plan on having kids. We're dinks. Of course we're going to go out to eat every night after work. We're dinks. We don't have to ask our family for financial help or to watch our kid when we want to go out. We're dinks. We're going to go to Costco and buy all the snacks in bulk that we want. We're dinks. We have disposable income to spend on whatever we would like and don't have to spend on a kid. We're dinks. I'm going to go to every football game and play 18 holes whenever I want. We're dinks. We're going to get asked at every single family event what we're doing with our life. I mean, they're bragging about not having kids. They, I mean, there's so much to go off on that. Just get us started here, Sarah. If you don't want to have kids, fine. But, like, do you, you're not having kids so you can eat all the Costco snacks? <laughs> yeah, we know, buddy. We can tell. Maybe you shouldn't. For those listening on podcasts, the gentleman was of the larger variety <laughs> who was bragging about eating Costco snacks. That's the reason you don't have kids? Yeah. I get it. Kids are not for everyone, but that's the reason that you're going to choose so you can go out to eat more often yeah. and go eat the Costco snacks? Maybe consider this. Snacks are better when you have kids.
Yeah, seriously, I've never had more snacks in my house in my entire life than I have until. Like, I love eating snacks. You know, my wife, she yeah. maybe not is gonna maybe allow a lot, tons and tons of good junk food around the house. But when kids are there, yes, I'm just eating the kids' yes, snacks all exactly. the time. It's the perfect path to snacks. Think about when you go to Costco uh, and you load up on fruit snacks and all sorts of stuff. Uh, when you don't have your kids, are you getting looks? Yes. Yeah, when you right. have your kids, totally normal. <laughs> totally normal. I mean, I would say. There's an argument to be made to have kids just for the snack access. <laughs> like that, it's like they're doing this wrong. They're, doing if they're this selfish. They gotta have kids. Totally backwards. I mean, again, I think you made this point on News and Why It Matters earlier. It's a great one. If that's your mindset, don't have kids. <laughs> or really don't. Like yeah, it's okay. I we don't that. necessarily need more of you. We don't need <laughs> reproduction. And like probably not a great life for the kids. Yeah, I support that. Mm -hmm. I support their decision to not have kids. There you go. Um, <laughs> all right, tomorrow night is the big night. Uh, Seven thirty. It starts of the pre-show uh, with uh, this particular program in full gear to lead you up to the debate at eight o'clock. Uh, myself, Glenn, Sarah will be talking about the Republican debate while it's going on and afterwards. So don't miss it. You can go to blazetv.com/stew. If you use the code debate, you'll get thirty bucks off your subscription to Blaze TV Plus. Sarah, thanks for coming on. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Let me tell you about real estate agents I trust.com. Let's say you're a dink and you're looking for a new home. <laughs> and you can spend as much as you want on a giant home and fill those rooms with absolutely nothing but furniture. What a wonderful life you will have if you do such a thing. Uh, real estate agents I trust.com is the place to go to find your real estate agent. I don't know if they take dinks. They probably are fine with dinks. I, I mean, they're, I, they're, I don't see why not. I don't see why not. They're I, not they're non discriminatory. They're non discriminatory so. over there at real estate agents I trust.com. It's a free service to you. You can check it out. Make sure you're getting the best real estate agent, not only when you're selling a home, because everyone's like, okay, I'm selling a home. I got to have a good agent. But when you're buying a home, don't just like pick the agent you see under the house that's on Zillow, right? Like, Think about who your agent is. Have someone on your side of that transaction. That's really important. It's realestateagentsitrust.com. Realestateagentsitrust.com. It's a free service to you. Realestateagentsitrust.com. Some good news for Douglas Mackey. He's the guy that posted a meme back in 2016, basically joking, hey, if you want to vote for Hillary, you can just, you just vote from home. Text the, you know, the word Hillary to a phone number. And, you know, of course, no one should be fooled by this. I don't think anyone was fooled by this. We have no evidence at all that it moved even one voter to actually screw up and text Hillary and then not go vote. But they wanted to make an example out of him. So, you know, the entire election from 2016 and through Trump's term, nothing happened with this. Obviously, he didn't think there was a crime committed. And then a week after Biden got in, all of a sudden he's getting calls and uh, they uh, they wound up um, arresting him. Now, he, they are letting him, uh, they're dropping the prison sentence for now while he's looking at the appeal. And the way this works, he's excited about this. He's basically saying um, that the court is granting our motion for bond pending appeal. This ruling is huge because it means the appeals court decided that my appeal presents a, quote, substantial and debatable issue of law that if resolved in my favor would result in conviction being vacated. I think it's blatantly obvious this should be vacated and it's totally wrong that this had ever happened in the first place. Um, by the way, uh, in case you were looking for, now I, be careful with what you post online. Don't post a meme with Donald Trump's mugshot, but you can buy some wrapping paper with his face on it. Yes, Donald Trump, $35 wrapping paper with his mugshot. He is monetizing this like, like exactly how you'd expect Donald Trump to monetize the uh, mugshot. Interesting too, this is kind of a forgotten piece over the past couple of months, but Remember, Donald Trump came back on Twitter, or X, to put his picture, uh, his mugshot up, and then never came back. He just kind of decided, everyone was like, oh, he's back on Twitter. Eh, not really. He just posted that one thing and then never came back after that. Bob Menendez uh, is now looking uh, really uh, worse and worse by the day. The New Jersey businessman told police he was a victim of an armed robbery in 2013. This is someone associated with Menendez, a donor, and asked police to recover the 22 gold bars stolen from him. A decade later, four of those gold bars with unique serial numbers had come into possession of Senator Menendez and his wife. Now, we've thrown out George Santos from the House for lying about Botox or something. 
But Menendez continues to stay in. It's, it's really fascinating. Um, his, the New Jersey businessman is Fred Dibes. He was uh, reported to police he was the victim of an armed robbery. And now um, a lot of this wound up getting over to Menendez. I mean, some people are speculating that maybe this donor knew these were going to Menendez and it kind of faked the robbery to get them over to his good buddy Bob. I have no idea if that's true. Um, of course, at this point, no one really does. But it does seem that with the overwhelming amount of evidence goes and points in the direction of Bob Menendez being incredibly corrupt. We've known this for a long time, and it seems to be only getting worse. One other bizarre story is this John Fetterman weird transition he's going through. All of a sudden, he's really good on Israel. You're like, wait, what a minute, what is he saying? And he's also been good on Bob Menendez, saying this guy's corrupt and he should be out. He's been called for his ouster, called for his expulsion and his, his, uh, him, for him to step down from his seat. And I guess he's just trying to be funny, too. George Santos got voted out of Congress the other day, and his big uh, way of monetizing that was not to make ra- uh, wrapping paper of his mugshot, because you might know he actually hasn't been convicted of anything or even charged, uh, really, with a crime. I don't think he has a mugshot, does he? I don't know. Probably wouldn't make as much as Donald Trump did anyway. Um, but he's out of Congress, and he's gone to Cameo. Now, Cameo is an app. You can go on, and if you can find you know, some celebrity and say, hey, you know, record a video just for me, and they range from, like, I don't know, probably 20 bucks all the way up to thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, George Santos is charging $2,500 for a video. And who requested a video from George Santos? Well, John Fetterman. Fetterman has. And it's about Menendez, a bizarre turn of events here. Here is uh, George Santos and his cameo for Bob Menendez. Hey, Bobby. Uh, look, I don't think I need to tell you, but these people that want to make you get in trouble and want to kick you out and make you run away, you make them put up or shut up. You stand your ground, sir, and don't get bogged down by all the haters out there. Stay strong. Merry Christmas. <laughs> what a freaking world we live in right now. I don't even know. We live in the most... What timeline is this? It's, whatever, whatever timeline this is, it sucks. Uh, let's change it. Please, can we, can we just have people who actually are sane in government? It's probably too much to ask, isn't it? It probably is. All right, back in a second. Let me tell you about Jace Daily. Jace Daily is from Jace Medical. It's the same company that brought you the Jace case. We've talked about that a bunch of times. And Jace Daily, though, is a little different. It's a subscription service that allows you to get up to 12 months of a backup supply of your prescription medications. This covers medications, you know, for like cholesterol, diabetes, heart health, blood pressure, even mental health. Jace Daily has a ton of add-on options as well that I think you'll probably like, but the this is a really, it's, you know, we don't think about medication when we, come about, when we think about preparing. We think about food and water, and obviously this is really important. But, like, if you're taking medication every day that's going to keep your health strong, what happens if the supply chain breaks down? You're going to have nothing, and you're going to have to live without this medication. That could be the, the difference between life and death. The order is received by a uh, certified healthcare professional at Jace Daily, and it's delivered straight to your door. So it's nice and easy, and if you're prepared medically in the case of an emergency, you're going to feel a heck of a lot better about your future, and, and you're going to feel like you have a backup. You know, someone's got your back. Jace Medical's got your back. JaceMedical.com. Go there now. Subscribe to Jace Daily. If you use the promo code STU, you can get a big discount on your order. It's JaceMedical.com. Subscribe to Jace Daily at J-A-S-E Medical.com. The code is Stu. Actress Gal Gadot is blasting silence on Hamas's sexual atrocities. The world has failed the women of October 7th. Is there any other argument to this? I mean, it's just bizarre. Uh, she says, we claim uh, that we stand against rape, violence against women. We will not let women be victimized and then silence. We say we believe women and stand with women and speak out for women. But in ca- instead, she, what she's saying is this is just not going on. This is our moment as women and allies of women to act. I am beseeching all of those who have done so much for women's rights globally from the U.N. to human rights community to please join in the demand that Hamas release every single woman hostage r- immediately. Now, again... I, of course, agree uh, with that. They should release they should release all of them. Uh, you know, I, if you want to start with women and children first, I'm totally fine with that approach. Uh, but they should all be released. And until they are, 
uh, you know, this is not going to stop. And honestly, even if they do release all of them, being honest, I mean, no one from Hamas hopefully is watching this, but like the, the, Israel's been quite clear about this. This is not about just the hostages being released. This is about Hamas being eliminated. So they can't do this again and again and again and again and again to these people. So that's around the corner. Um, but, you know, we see there's not even, a, you know, normal ag- levels of agreement uh, to the ceasefire from Hamas. They keep fire. No one ever bothered to ask Hamas if they wanted a ceasefire. Everyone's arguing on their behalf for a ceasefire. What they want is a ceasefire from Israel at them. The other way around, they don't want a ceasefire at all. Um, now, Democrats are working on a resolution condemning Hamas's use of sexual violence, which is incredibly important because you can't just do it. You got to come up with a resolution and work on that. Work on the wording because you don't want to get the wording wrong. And this is what's happening with the Democratic Party right now. They're basically out there. You know, they'll say they condemn these things, but let me give you a good example. This is uh, Jayapal uh, on with Diana Bash from the other day. Watch. I've seen a lot of progressive women, generally speaking, they're quick to defend women's rights and speak out against using rape as a, as a weapon of war, but downright silent on what we saw on October 7th and what might be happening inside Gaza right now to these hostages. Why is that? I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that that's true. I think we, we always talk about the impact of war on women in particular. In fact, I remember 20 years ago, I did a petition around the war in Iraq. Have you said, saying have that, you talked about it since oh, October absolutely. 7th? And I've condemned what Hamas has done. I've condemned Specifically all of women? the actions. Absolutely. The, the rape, the, of course. But I think we have to remember that but. Israel is a democracy. That is why they are a strong ally of oh. ours. And if they do not comply with international humanitarian law, they are bringing themselves to a place that makes it much more difficult strategically for them yeah. to be able to oh, build the kinds okay. of allies right, to keep of public... I, oh, oh, just, oh, well, she's just arguing on behalf of Israel. I love that. You know, look, there's a lot of raping, and, you know, of course we condemn that, but Israel's a democracy, and uh, this is bad for them if they continue to do these things. Uh, let let me give you a little bit more of Jayapal. You said it worked. Yes, there were hostages who were released, but it wasn't even an actual uh, hard c- ceasefire. They were just trying to get another day and Hamas wouldn't comply. So what makes you think that Hamas would comply with a longer term ceasefire? Well, I think this is all about negotiation. Qatar has been incredibly helpful here. Oh. It's not clear to me Qatar. from the reporting um, who was to blame for? Uh, you don't for believe the, the U.S. the Biden administration that who Hamas? Is well, I just to think blame. it's very you know, complicated. Uh, right, women. Enough. I think who it's... is to blame? I mean, it's so hard to know who is to blame: the rapist or the person being raped? Who knows? It could go either way. I'm I, I'm a shrug your shoulders kind of guy on that question. Who could possibly know? It's such a difficult calculation. What a conundrum. Who could be at fault? Whose side should we be on? Should it be the rapist and the beheaders, or should we go the other direction? I don't know. It's so difficult. Let's throw our hands up in the air and act like we don't know the actual answer. Avoiding responsibility for taking away those things that are killing people on a daily basis. And and the reality is that... <laughs> Did you catch that? I want you to I want you to listen to that again and just listen right towards the end if you notice something a little odd. Avoiding responsibility for taking away those things that are killing people on a daily basis. Oh. And and the reality is that Okay, there's so much to talk about. First of all, John Kerry's lying again at a co- climate conference. But the uh, that's not the accusation here. The accusation is He's talking about things that kill that are killing people. He may have done something that was silent but deadly. Maybe not so silent. Um, John Kerry has been accused of farting during his climate lecture in Dubai. Let me play it for you one more time and listen closely. It's uh, it's a doozy. Avoiding responsibility for taking away those things that are killing people on a daily basis. Oh. And and the reality is that. Oops. Now, what's interesting, did you notice... Avoiding the, the, responsibility. Oh, you want to do it again? Uh, the, did you notice the woman's reaction, by the way? Uh, do we have that screenshot of, of the woman? Look at how she reacts. Right after the fart, she does this. Um, I I think she smelt it. Now, there is the theory that whoever smelt it dealt it. So maybe it was her. Maybe it wasn't Carrie at all. Maybe she just laid one. Who knows? We'll see you tomorrow.